Welcome back to day three with Miss Cook. For our reading lesson today, you'll need something to write with, a pen or a pencil. You will need paper to write on or a journal or one of the packets from school if you have one. In the lesson today, we will hear and think about part of narrative nonfiction story again. So like our previous lesson, we we'll listen to a nonfiction story, we'll do that again. We will determine important ideas and supporting details in the story. And then we will think of opinions and give reasons for our opinions. Welcome to Miss Cook's Reading Corner. You might remember some things about me from yesterday. I have four pets that you might hear or see walking around in the background. Um, I love Harry Potter. I love to reread those books and listen to them on audiobook. I have um, my favorite job in the whole world is teaching at Broadview Thompson. I teach fourth and fifth graders and I miss it so much. Hi to all you bulldogs out there. Thanks for joining me today. Turn and talk. We will need a turn and talk partner. My turn and talk partner is Hedwig. Hedwig can turn his head and look at me and we can talk to each other as we stop uh, during our reading today. So find your favorite stuffy. Maybe you can use your pet, a brother or sister. Feel free to speak the language that you're most comfortable speaking at home as you talk and think about uh, what we read and what we discuss today. Remember back to last week when you thought about important ideas and supporting details in A River Ran Wild? You paid close attention to distinguishing between or telling the difference between important ideas and supporting details. Those are like facts, examples, and descriptions, and these help readers understand texts more deeply. Today we will reread the passage that we heard in the last lesson from Harry Houdini, Master of Magic. We will think about the important ideas in the parts we heard last time. This will prepare us to write a summary together. As we reread the passages from Harry Houdini, I will stop several times. At each stop, you will think about the important ideas in that part of the story. The Great Houdini. The new safe stood on the stage of the Euston Place Theatre in London. Its door was swung wide open. Harry Houdini, the young American magician, got ready to step inside. He was wearing only a bathing suit. London newspaper had printed these bold headlines. Houdini challenges safe maker, offers to escape from the safe before theater audience. The year was 1904. The people watching from the audience were excited. The air in the safe will last only a few minutes, one man said. He'll die if he doesn't get out fast. It's impossible. How could anyone escape from a locked safe? Houdini can. On the stage, Houdini shook hands with men who had come up from the audience. They had looked over the safe to make sure it was in good working order. A doctor examined Houdini. He had even asked the magician to open his mouth. No tools, he told the audience, nothing on him. Then Houdini said, shaking hands with the last man, let me enter the safe, lock the door behind me. The heavy steel door clanged shut. A screen was placed around the safe. As the men left the stage, the orchestra played soft music. The audience settled back in their seats to wait. They watched the screen. A half an hour passed. The people began to grow restless. How can he possibly get out? A woman asked. One man thought he knew the answer. Houdini isn't like the rest of us, he whispered. He has supernatural powers. He can change himself into a spirit and slip between the cracks of the door, just like smoke. What is important to understand and remember about what we've heard so far? Think for a moment about what you've heard so far and what is important to understand about the reading to this point. You can turn and talk to your um, neighbor or your stuffy. I will listen to Hedwig's ideas about what has happened so far. What do we think? Here's where we'll record some ideas for what's important and what we've learned so far in the book. So as we go along, we'll add ideas to this chart. I will add the ideas that I'm thinking of and I'm hoping that some of our ideas will be the same. Let's take a moment to think about what we learned so far and see if we can add something to the chart.
one of the ideas that I thought was important and Hedwig agreed was that the doctor checked to make sure Harry had no tools to get out of the safe. They were on stage and the doctor checked inside his mouth and made sure that there was nothing that could help him get out of the state safe. Before our stop and think, we heard a man in the audience say that he thought Houdini could escape through the cracks in the safe like smoke. The woman looked at him. I don't believe that. Believe me, the man said, turning away. It's true. 40 minutes passed. Open the door, someone yelled. He's dead. He can't get out. A woman screamed and fainted. 45 minutes. People were whistling and stamping. A man stood and shook his fist. Let him out. He needs help. At that moment, Houdini stepped from behind the screen. A great sigh swept through the audience. There he is. He's alive. Men rushed onto the stage to inspect the safe. The door is locked. Houdini smiled and bowed to the cheering people. How had he escaped from the seal safe? No one in the audience that night guessed the answer. The fact was that Houdini had escaped in just 14 minutes. He had been sitting behind the screen for almost half an hour while the audience's excitement grew. Here we'll add to our chart two of the important ideas from our last section of reading. The first one we're adding is the audience thinks he's dead. And the second one is he escapes, but he is sitting behind the screen. So he escaped fast, but he stayed behind the screen to let the audience's excitement build. Many years ago, before movies, radio, or TV, Harry Houdini was the greatest magician and escape artist in the world. Some people thought he was born with magical powers, but this was not true. He became a master magician only after long years of hard work. In fact, he began working toward his goal when he was a boy. Houdini's real name was Enric Weiss. He was born in Budapest, Hungary in 1874, the third of five children of Mayor Samuel and Cecilia Weiss. Shortly after Enric's birth, Samuel Weiss brought his family to America. They made their home in Appleton, Wisconsin. Samuel Weiss was a rabbi, the religious leader of Jewish people in Appleton. His congregation was small and he couldn't and couldn't pay Rabbi Weiss enough to support his wife and children. As they grew up, Enric and his brothers had to earn money for the family by shining shoes and selling newspapers. What do you think is important in that part of the reading? What we've read so far, including that last section. Let's think about it. Some of the important ideas from this last section were Harry Houdini's real name was Eric Weiss. We learned that. We learned that he moved from Hungary to America, and we learned that his family was poor. When Enric wasn't working or going to school, he practiced doing tricks. At the age of nine, he hung ropes from a tree in his backyard. Then he tied a wooden bar to the ropes. He learned to do such good stunts on the homemade trapeze that one of his friends asked him to be in his five cent circus. Feeling like a real circus star, Enric called himself the Prince of the Air. He loved the clapping and the cheering of the boys and girls who watched him. He also practiced rope escapes. He put his hands behind his back and let his friends tie his wrists together with a rope. After a few minutes, he held up the rope. His friends were all amazed. How had he escaped? Enric only smiled. He had already learned the first rule of being a magician. Never tell how you do a trick. Mother Weiss was amazed at another trick her son had learned. Pieces of her apple cake began to disappear. So she hid the cake in the cupboard and locked the door. The cake still vanished. One day, after several cakes disappeared, she found out where they went. Her son had a new interest, picking locks. The small lock on her cupboard door was easy to open with a bent piece of wire. That doesn't surprise me, the town locksmith said. He had heard about Enric's trick. That boy has been coming to my shop for weeks. He can pick any lock in the place. Whoa, what do you guys think of that? Think for a moment about what we understand and what is important that's happened so far. Well, I think we might uh, find importance in the fact that Enric snuck cake. He figured out how to pick locks and snuck cake. 
and he went and practiced picking locks at the uh, locksmith's shop. So he took it upon himself to work hard and try this new trick. Oh, and you know what else? I think it's important that he liked the cheering from the audience. We talked about that the other day that he liked hearing the cheers of the boys and girls. I think that's important too. I know you had some important ideas from our last section of reading. For this time on our chart, we're gonna add that Enric performed trick for his friends and that he also really liked the cheering and applause that they gave him for his tricks. In 1887, when Enric was 13, Rabbi Weiss moved his family to New York. There were more Jewish people there and Rabbi Weiss hoped to start a small religious school, but he became ill and could do nothing to support his wife and five children. To help his sick father, Enric took whatever jobs he could find. During one Christmas season, he worked as the package delivery boy for a large store. He lettered a card and pinned it to his hat one day. Christmas is coming, turkeys are fat, please drop a quarter in the messenger boy's hat. That evening, he stood in front of his mother. Shake me, he said, I'm magic. As she shook her son, Mrs. Weiss's eyes opened wide. Quarters dropped out of her son's sleeves and fell into her lap. Enric, she exclaimed in German, the language that she always spoke. There's enough money to pay rent this week. She hugged her hardworking son. After Christmas, Enric looked for another job. As he walked along Broadway, he came upon, came upon a line of boys in front of a small factory, H. Richter's sons. A sign in the window read, Assistant Necktie Cutter Wanted. Enric was only 14 years old, but he boldly walked to the head of the line. He took the sign off the door. The job is taken, he told the boys. Thank you for waiting. His bluff worked. He got the job and stayed at H. Richter's sons for the next two and a half years. During these years, Enric practiced magic in his spare time. He did card tricks and trick rope ties. He read books on magic and gave magic shows in neighborhood clubs. He called himself Cardo or Eric the Great. These clubs paid Enric a few dollars for each show. Mother Weiss was always waiting for the extra money to buy medicine for Papa, who was sick in bed, to put food on the table, and to pay the rent. The money helped, but magic was only a hobby. Enric never thought about making a living doing tricks. What do you guys think was important so far in there? Anything come up? Let's think. I think it's important that uh, Enric took a lot of his own time to practice magic, even though he was working full time. It also shows that he is pretty bold, you know, to go to the front of the line and tell everyone the job was taken, but it worked, he got the job. One of the important ideas we learned in this last section was that Enric earned extra money for his family by doing magic in clubs. Behold a miracle, chapter two. One day when Enric was 16, he went into a bookstore. Looking along the shelves, he came across an old book on the life of Robert Houdin. It was a moment that changed his life. Jean Eugene Robert Houdin was the greatest magician in France. He performed before the French emperor and before England's Queen Victoria. He pulled cannonballs from an empty hat he made trees grow fruit on stage. He even floated ladies mid-air. Enric spent the night reading Robert Houdin's life story. The next morning, his mother found him in bed still reading. Enric, she scolded, so much reading. It will hurt your eyes. Mother, Enric said, please, never mind my eyes. I am reading the most important book of my life. So, Mother Weiss said, what makes this book so important at six o'clock in the morning? Enric held up the book. This man, Robert Houdin, he has made me see that I can make magic my life's work. If he did it, so can I. Mother Weiss's eyebrows lifted. A fine thought, Enric, but can you make money doing magic? Remember, poor Papa, he is unable to work for us. There's rent to pay and we must eat. Enric stared at the book. I don't know how much money I can make, but I want to become a magician just like Robert Houdin. With a few days, within a few days, Enric left his job at H. Richter's sons. He also made another important change. To honor his hero, he decided to change his name to Houdini. Since friends called him Airy, which sounded like Harry, he became Harry Houdini. He was 17 years old. 
What is important to understand and remember about what we've read so far? We've gone into chapter two. What do we think? Grover, Hedwig, any ideas? Let's think about it for a moment and then check in. Well, I think it's important we found out why and how he changed his name, why he chose that name. And he was interested, he started to become interested at this point in how to make money at being a magician, how to make it his job. In this last section of reading in the part of chapter two that we read, we learned that Enric read a book about a French magician and decided to change his name to Houdini based on the name of that French magician. We also learned that he decided to make magic his life's work. One of the important ideas from our ideas chart, I took and put here for one idea we can expand on. This is what we'll do when we start working on our summary. We'll use important ideas to create our summary. So here's one we're gonna look into. Enric decided to make magic his life's work. So we found out he decided to make magic his life's work right at the end of our reading today. So there were some details leading up to that point that support this idea. One of those details was that Enric had been making extra money performing at clubs and performing for his friends. Another one of those details was that he thought that magic was just a hobby. That changed when he read the book about the French magician and gave him the idea that he could make magic his life's work. So those details support this important idea that Enric decided to make magic his life's work. And that is something that we will include when we build our summary about Harry Houdini, Master of Magic. Let's talk about discussing our opinions. I know we don't have our usual turn and talk partners to discuss our opinions because we're at home but we can still think about how we can respectfully share our opinions and remember that it's okay to disagree. We're not always gonna agree with each other and that's okay. The important thing to remember is to be respectful when we disagree. So when someone disagrees with you, how would you like that person to tell you that? I think it's important to tell someone that they that you don't agree with them um, but you can say that by saying your opinion is good but my opinion is different and then you can give the reasons for your opinion if a person doesn't tell you in that way how might you feel and why how might you guys feel it might make you feel bad or sad or even angry when someone disagrees with you but remember it's okay to disagree just be respectful about it and then how can we make sure that we can disagree and respectfully discuss our opinions? I think we can start off by saying we might disagree, but that's okay. Let's discuss our opinions anyway. That way you set up the discussion with the expectation that you might not agree. We've reached the end of our time here together today, so now it's time to move on to our independent daily reading or IDR. We encourage you to read for 25 to 30 minutes. And as you read today, thinking about strategies that we use today is to stop and think about important ideas or things that you've learned that help you understand the character or the story. And then using those ideas, we can form a summary. So I'm gonna keep reading my Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. As you can see, it is a very big book, so I will be reading this book for quite a while and I'm happy to be doing it. So I'll take 25 or 30 minutes just like you guys and I'll be thinking about important ideas and things that I want to remember about my characters and my story that could be important for a summary.